Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. January 10th, 2024, let's get into it. The big story of the day for me was Hunter Biden. <laughs> he was, he, uh, I don't know what possessed him to do it, but he went to Congress. Now, you gotta remember, they uh, subpoenaed him uh, a while back, and uh, he was in violation of that subpoena, which means you're supposed to go to jail, and if it had been any Trump person, like, um, let's say, uh, uh, well, I don't even want to say, they would, they would never subpoena Mike Pompeo. I'm trying to think of, um, let's just say Tucker Carlson. If Tucker Carlson didn't show up, you better damn believe he'd be in cuffs and in jail if he didn't meet a subpoena before Congress, because he's persona non grata right now. Same with Elon Musk. Uh, I bet he would be in, in jail. And those are two powerful individuals. So, uh, but Hunter Biden appears to be more powerful. But anyway, he sat there and uh, it was kind of like being in the audience. And man, I'm going to tell you, these uh, Republican uh, um, congressmen, they are vicious. I could, I could never be a congressman because I couldn't. Well, number one, I'm not that sharp. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. But man, they tore him up one side and down the other. If I didn't know that Hunter Biden was such a criminal and what he's done to the United States, I felt actually sorry for him. But I, I give him credit because he, he, his face, he, he didn't show any expression. He just kind of sat there and took it as they uh, just grilled him. I mean, my God. And uh, so that went on. And of course, the Democrats, the thing I don't understand is how can you be a Democrat and not be embarrassed? Because the Republicans were going, you know, he violated the subpoena and he's not in jail. We don't understand this. How can how can you justify this? And they said, well, you know, he didn't really violate it because we told him he didn't absolutely have to testify before Congress. And it just went on from there. It was crazy watching that whole thing. And I uh, but then when Marjorie Taylor Greene came on, <laughs> oh, my God, <laughs> he left the room. Oh, and she sit there and she was call, cat calling after him. Oh, so you're just going to leave now, huh? You know, I don't know if she called him a coward, but uh, I, I, you know, it was it was about like that. I mean, it was rough. Holy moly! So that was kind of the big story of the day. Uh, the next one I got onto was uh, New York City. They're actually closing down a high school because it's cold, and they got to house a bunch of migrants to uh, to keep them warm. So they uh, the kiddies aren't going to school to take care of the migrants that are in New York City. So I don't I don't understand why Democrats are for open borders uh, in, in, in basically bankrupting their cities with all how I mean how's it how's New York New York's got running a huge deficit so is Los Angeles so are a lot of these places how are they gonna afford all this oh man I'm checking the this is all a new trail and that's what I've, I've been doing uh, so I'm just kind of getting over here let's uh, let's take a look at this this is pretty cool so it's coming up to a fence I don't have a clue where I'm at. Let's let's take a let me just show you what I'm seeing. So there you go. There's a no trespassing sign, so that must be private property. I see a building up this way. Huh. Oh well. Pretty cool. Uh anyway, getting back to uh, New York City. So uh, all these Democrat cities are going bankrupt. Chicago, you know, and it, what baffles me is the blacks, they don't understand they're being replaced. <laughs> I mean, the Democrats don't give a shit about the black vote no more. Of course, they never cared about blacks anyway. That's the Democrat Party, the, the Confederacy, you know, they, they were the party of slavery, you know. So, uh, but now the, uh, they figured they're not going to get the black vote anymore, so they want to replace them with all the illegal aliens. And then, uh, boy, if those illegal aliens get into the military, we are screwed. They will kill Americans at no hesitation. All they got to do is get the order from Washington, D.C. And uh, speaking of Washington, D.C., I kind of wanted to hit on a topic that uh, you might want to start thinking about. I'm not sure I can hike this trail. Looks pretty rough. Uh, wouldn't want to do it on a warm day. This would be tick central through here. But uh, anyway, so uh, getting back to, we got $34 trillion in debt. We are giving Israel $300 million a day was a, a number that I heard. I'm not sure about that. Uh, but I do know we're flying in most every day uh, plane loads of 2,000 pound bombs. And, uh, and then, of course, we, of course, we got cargo ships uh, showing in there, probably giving them uh, uh, more bombs. Oh, man, we're down in the swamp. <laughs> oh, my God. Who would have thought? 
I didn't I didn't know I was hidden down into the swamp. I got to get this on the video. But uh, oh man, got to don't, don't want to trip. So all right, so I guess this trail just kind of that's kind of weird. It just kind of dead ends right here. I'll just show you what it looks like. Take a look. All right, so I'll just keep talking while I'm showing you nature here. But $14 trillion in debt, $300 million. So basically, we are completely supporting the Israeli economy. Understand that. And we're also supporting you know, Ukraine. So we're paying the, the pensions. We're paying the street sweepers. We're paying uh, the politicians. We're paying everything because Israel right now, all of their, uh, their, their, their economy is in shambles because uh, they, everybody's under arms. So uh, all they're not working in the factories or, or doing jobs anymore. So it's um, so that tells you how much the Congress and the U.S. government cares about American citizens. They don't give a shit about you or me. All they care about is giving money to foreign countries like uh, Europe or uh, or uh, Ukraine or Israel. I mean, without the United without our taxpayer money, Ukraine wouldn't exist. Same with Israel. Israel wouldn't exist. So. Think about all the people here in the United States that need help. I'm just saying, I, but I think that you got to get prepared. Because uh, where was I going with all of this? Well, you see, once again, I keep repeating myself. I feel like a, a, a broken record, man. You, silver, platinum, gold, commodities. Uh, you know, you've you've got to get prepared for when the dollar tanks. I mean, I I, took, I did a video on bricks just the other day, where I talked about how de-dollarization has has gone on to steroids. And who's going to buy U.S. Treasuries? Are you going to buy Treasuries? I ain't going to buy Treasuries. Who's going to buy Treasuries? China's not going to buy any. They've already, in fact, they've been selling off what Treasuries they had. Russia can't buy any. They're under sanctions. I'm sure India ain't going to buy any. That's almost half the damn world's population right there. So when nobody's buying your debt and you're $34 trillion, and right now the interest on the debt costs more than what we're paying the military, I, you know, and that's another thing. I wonder why the military doesn't, think of that as a national security emergency because if the military can't get any money because everything's going to interest on the debt or the dollar hyperinflates then the, the whole military industrial complex goes under how are they going to survive where is the money going to come from well i mean they're going to try to bleed it out of you and me you know i've, I've heard that uh, there, there are places now in the country where they've got these cameras up and uh they, if you uh, get into a red light and you crawl across or uh, or you you hit it and it's yellow and you go through it and they just send you a ticket in the mail and there's one poor guy he's got a plumbing company I heard about this he's spending eleven hundred to eighteen hundred dollars a month just paying the tickets of all of the plumbers that he's got working for him uh, just just to, just to, because of the grifting of the uh, of the city that uh, his business runs in you know, it's just, it's kind of like my uncle when he had to bribe uh, people in New York City to get a crane because he was building a hotel. You know, same same thing. It's just the price of doing business, but that shouldn't be. Imagine if all that money could go into his employees' pockets, then that would go back into the economy and it would help everybody out. But it does not. So anyway, so let's uh, let's continue on. Anyway, I'm watching the world burn videos. I try not to talk about too much cybersecurity. But I did want to hit on a couple of things. Uh, somebody asked where they could buy the book. The book is not in print. Uh, I printed up 100 copies, sold a few, tried to get reviews on the rest, didn't get a single review. Uh, so there's no printed copies. Now I will be bringing the chapters up to date and uh, I'll sell those chapters uh, as PDF files on eBay to start with. Uh, eventually those chapters uh, will turn into books. So the first book will probably be on virtualization and SSH or maybe uh, two books. That could be uh, virtualization. You can go to virtualbox.org, virtualbox.org, and if you have a computer with any computing power at all, that's uh, virtualization software that'll run right off, right over top of Windows, and, uh, and then you can install Linux operating systems, and, uh, and then you would follow because the SSH chapter would be the next chapter that, or the first chapter that I'll bring up to date, and then you can install an SSH server within that virtual operating system, and also that does give you a layer of protection. So if you ever want to get out on the internet. And you're worried about uh, somebody hacking your browser, or you're, or you're going questionable places, or you you got a link and you're not real sure about it, and you're saying, "Man, if I go to this, it could infect my operating system." Well, if they infect a virtual operating system, it doesn't matter. 
okay because you that's just a file on your computer you can delete that virtual operating system reinstall a Linux operating system and then you're back up and running and that way your core operating system never gets corrupted uh, so that would be a great way it also protects your computer from all the cookies and the and all of the temporary files you know if you're not running CCleaner from time to time but uh, if you're not using the paid version it only does a limited amount of work anyway enough on uh, cybersecurity so let's get back to the news uh, so the hoodies I do expect we're gonna have a regional conflict Red Sea uh, or in that area because right now um, well yesterday I reported on there was 40 40 missiles launched uh, by the hoodie I mean by the uh, Hezbollah at Israel and Israel's uh, every day they're threatening uh, more strikes and they they got planes flying in and the rhetoric coming out of the of the Hezbollah is getting uh, more and more aggressive so I'm expecting that to kick off at any time but either by probably by Israel uh, they'll they're going to attack uh, Lebanon and then you're going to have a two-front war uh, with Gaza of course I think they'll just pull most everything out of Gaza and just keep dropping two thousand because it's all about the extermination of the Palestinians it's not at this point it's not about Hamas at all you know so they can just uh, pull the troops out of, uh, of Gaza and just continue to bomb the hell out of the city they'll starve the uh, Palestinians of course there'll be uh, rampant disease in there uh, the water you know you can't go long without water so I imagine we're gonna have mass casualties in Gaza uh, over time because the United States is dropping off uh, uh, cargo planes of 2,000 pound bombs daily to exterminate the Palestinians and then of course we've got ships coming in with all, all sorts of other munitions for Israel to help in the extermination or the genocide of the Palestinians now getting to that tomorrow is the big day uh, we're gonna have the uh, world criminal court of justice I think that's what it's called uh, out of the UN uh, and all nations subscribe to that it's not like the world criminal court which nobody pays attention to <laughs> in the United States owns it, owns it anyway uh, so uh, all the countries as far as I can tell now if this is incorrect I'll check it when I get home because I did get an X uh, message on it uh, almost every country in the world is uh, saying that it's a genocide uh, except the United States and Israel so we're pretty isolated on the world stage and of course the finding that the, the Court of Justice uh, finds could isolate us even more but I don't think they're gonna side against the United States because uh, we're gonna buy off uh, those judges some kind of way uh, or threaten them in some kind of way and and they'll vote uh, even though the evidence is overwhelming overwhelming that it's a genocide I don't think that they're gonna well we'll see I mean you know you never know with so many countries coming out and saying that they believe the South African uh, uh, paperwork that or the case that they filed is legit for a genocide uh, that might be enough pressure to get the court to to take the case seriously and and, and do the right thing and, and call it a genocide because that's what it is or I call it an extermination uh, getting off of that what was oh yeah and so the hoodies the, the other aspect of that conflict I saw a, a, an X today an X message that uh, the hoodies attacked a US ship now I don't know if it was a warship or just a cargo ship uh, it could have been either so you can see that's kind of threatening on up there I think it's just a matter of time until the United States strikes the hoodies with a big airstrike now I won't do no damn good they'll probably kill a few people most of, the, most of the Houthis are underground. Got to remember, they fought Saudi Arabia for eight years, and then Saudi Arabia bombed the hell out of them for eight freaking years. Uh, they're still down there, kicking, kicking and screaming. So I don't think an airstrike by the United, but it does open the door for them to declare war on the United States, which they may have already done that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think they have. I think that the, but they, at that point, the, the gloves come off. And they'll start launching uh, drones and, and whatever missiles they've got that the Iran's given to them uh, at the U.S. warships. Uh, they're sitting ducks out there in the Red Sea, so that could get really, <coughs> really interesting. So, so you can see where all the money's going. <clears throat> you know, we're funding Ukraine, we're funding uh, Israel, six hundred million dollars a day. And now, if we're going to fight a war in the Middle East, we just fought. A, we're still fighting the war in Ukraine, giving them another sixty-one billion dollars. Folks, it's just a matter of time until you see hyperinflation. There's no, we're, we're just borrowing the money to do all this. This isn't tax money that's paying for this. Hell, the tax money is not even covering the, the Social Security or the Medicare, which the government doesn't care about. I told you they don't give a shit about me or you. So that's, uh, that's the next big news 
uh, the regional war that I think is going to happen in the Middle East. I just don't see how we're, it's going to be avoided. And uh, that could be the end of Israel because Hezbollah is loaded to the teeth. And uh, even with the United States help, I mean, how are you going to get troops on the ground in there? And then lastly, you know, I, I've already talked about it. we got North Korea uh, saying that, you know, they, they're, they're talking about uh, things flaring up between them and South Korea. And we got those 30,000 troops that are sitting ducks in South Korea. Because if, if the North Koreans hit them with all the missiles and the artillery that they got, that base will just be ev eviscerated. And of course, what are you going to do then? Drop a nuke on North Korea and then, then the whole world goes goes bye-bye. Yeah, we got to talk about the election for just a minute. So there was a wild statistic that came out of uh, Detroit. As you know, I used to live up near Detroit for many years. That's blue. That's that's deep, deep blue. That's blue on top of blue. <laughs> that's cheating blue. That's where Wade County. That's where most of the votes came for Biden for uh, a, a questionable number of votes. There was a, let's just say that there was a there was a lot of questionable shenanigans that took place in Wayne County during the 2020 election, and uh, we never never got to the well. We 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 were getting to the bottom of it, but the uh, the, the their uh, corrupt criminal court system shut it all down. So, who knows? Uh, but uh, th there was a poll that came out, and it has Trump ahead of Biden by eight points in Detroit City. That seems impossible to me, but I, I believe it. I guess it's because Biden is so hated. Now, when they took the poll, if it was any other candidate besides Biden, then then the you know the Democrat candidate was going to win. So it's just, I guess it's just a dislike of Biden rather than, uh, uh, you know, that, that they're, the Democrats are coming around. You know, I, I, it always baffles me that the blacks don't understand they're being replaced <laughs> by, the, by the illegal aliens because the Democrats don't feel they can count on it. Well, they've never really want, cared about the black vote anyway. I mean, what Democrat has ever taken care of the black people, you know? They, uh, I, all they've done is, is destroy them, destroyed their families, uh, you know, Raise the crime in their cities. I mean, the Democrats hate black people. I mean, that's uh, that's what the blacks don't understand. But yet they they've been. I don't even understand how they've been brainwashed into voting Democrat. But I think you know, as the migrants replace the Democrats as the voting block of the Democrat Party, and they care less and less about the black vote, which they care nothing about it right now for the most part. Uh, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. Maybe maybe uh, the black vote will wake up. I'd say the same with Hispanics and Muslims. You know, I, I, I see more and more Hispanics, especially here in Florida, that are going to vote Republican. I can't say anything about, well, the Muslims. I think that's another reason that Detroit was going for, um, for uh, Trump. or Well, not really going for Trump, just didn't want Biden uh, because of what's been taking place with the extermination in Gaza. Yeah, I don't think that the Muslims in uh, Dearborn or a lot of them are in Detroit too are real happy about that. So we'll see what happens. Just wanted to talk about the election for two seconds. So the uh, next thing is this isn't necessarily a correction. It was just a speculation that I had or the people on X had uh, was that it was shrapnel that had uh, put uh, Austin in the hospital, uh, which it, it, if you believe the news, uh, that is not the case. It was prostate cancer. Uh, but it, the shrapnel story I thought had merit because that would be something that you would want to cover up. I mean, imagine that if Austin had been, if he had been in Kiev and he had taken shrapnel, <clears throat> I don't think that the government will want people to know that he was in the hospital or the Pentagon wouldn't want, want the, anybody to know that he was in the hospital for that because that, uh, that would get a lot of attention that the, these Kinzhal missiles went right through the uh, Ukrainian air defenses and uh, hit Kiev, uh, which they did, um, and then injured uh, one of our, well, our, our Secretary of Defense. <laughs> so that would be something you wouldn't want to get out, but they're saying it's just prostate cancer. So I wanted to make that uh, known, because uh, I had one guy, he says, well, that would make sense, and it, and it did, if it was shrapnel. So I wanted to get back to the, uh, the farmers in Germany real quick, because uh, somebody pointed uh, something out that I hadn't really thought about, but it does make a lot of sense. And, by the way, if you didn't know, the Polish truckers <clears throat> have joined the uh, farmers in their protest. But the, the thing is, and, and I feel bad for them, man, because it ain't going to go nowhere. 
even if they this was what the person pointed out is even if you get rid of the meat puppet Schultz who's in charge of Germany right now who are you gonna get Baerbock crazy Baerbock <laughs> I mean you know that's, that's even worse than Schultz at least Schultz is just a meat puppet who doesn't seem to just follow well he just follows whatever the Biden administration tells him to do Baerbock I mean she is a warmongering lunatic uh, she, she'd rather just see Germany completely bankrupt rather than and help Ukraine and send every freaking piece of military hardware that Germany has leaving them completely defenseless uh, uh, that's that's where she would be coming from so I just uh, I just don't see anything good for Germany coming out of this protest because uh, they just even if they change the leadership it's just not going to do no damn good unless they can get an election but I don't see that happening I I don't the, the, the powers that be in Germany right now answer to Brussels uh, and they just uh, they're not going to allow an election to take place because they probably would uh, suffer a loss right there the other piece of political news was Macron uh, he's they put in the globalists have put in a replacement the guy almost looks like Macron. <laughs> I mean, my God, dresses like Macron for sure. So they're, they're saying he's just another uh, uh, repeat of Macron. So even in, in France right now, if you get a change in power there and Macron has to go away, uh, that ain't going to do no damn good. And then I don't know if you saw the video out of uh, Italy. Oh my God, it was like a thousand people dressed up like Nazis. And they were doing the high hollow, uh, you know. So they, you know, we could have the next Mussolini out of Italy. Uh, good Lord! I mean, I was looking at that, going, "My God, it looks just like World War II." I mean, these people. So they were saying, you know, that's uh, that's that was crazy. That was crazy. I mean, it it looked just like Italy uh, back in 1940 or 39, when the uh, when Mussolini was in power. I mean, I, I don't know, man. Getting getting kind of scary getting kind of scary all right two quick things to help you out <clears throat> i don't know if you've got a house you probably have a leaf blower of some kind now the one i went with was the ego and uh but i ordered um the batteries you know the, the battery you go through the you got to get the big battery not the little battery the little batteries are trash don't even bother to buy them and you'll notice what i'm talking about it's uh, they're rated and i'll show you when i get home the battery that you want but uh, so I went up and if you buy the name brand battery uh, that comes with it, which most of the time, you know, that's that's what you got to get. But I just, you know, it was a lot. I mean, it's like 150, 200 bucks or something like that. And there was an off brand battery for 90 bucks, the big one. And uh, so I went ahead and ordered it. And this was a while back. And I'm going to tell you what, that battery lasts longer for 90 bucks than the $150 battery. And I'm going to show you that battery when I get home for your leaf blower if you have an ego or even that I think the battery is pretty universal for a lot of uh, that type of equipment for weed eaters battery operated weed eaters and uh, especially within the ergo line uh, the chainsaw all of that stuff but uh, yeah I'm going to show you that the other thing I forgot to point out when I was talking about the deficit at 34 trillion nobody buying treasuries that we're supporting the Israeli and of course the Ukrainian uh, governments, they're, everything about them, they're keeping them afloat, uh, and soon to be in a regional war. Uh, that's that's going to cost a lot of money. In uh, in the Middle East, uh, SD Boyan, SD Boyan, from what I can tell, is a really good company. And uh, um, Andy Sheckman was on, and he was talking about how you have to go with a, a name brand company. So the first thing he talked about was storage. Okay, storage of silver, gold, platinum. You know, if you if you want to store it, he says go with a big name company, and he uses Brinks. And the reason he uses Brinks is because Brinks has other uh, facets to their business. It's very unlikely that Brinks is going to go out of business. And he made a couple of examples of company storage companies for precious metals that have gone out of business. And uh, in fact, one of them was actually stealing the gold and silver from its customers. So, uh, and he says, you know, he's been with Brinks uh, 17 years and uh, has never had a problem. In fact, they treat him just like, even though he's a big customer, I mean, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars that he keeps in and out of Brinks. He gets treated the same way as anybody else. He has to go in 
you know they pat him down you know that if he's got a coat on the coat has to come off they check the pockets on the way in and the way out you know so it's a it's a big deal uh, so they they take their security very very seriously so if you do buy silver gold platinum palladium you know uh, I would investigate where the where's the nearest Brinks storage facility and uh, and work out a deal with them and that would be a good place to store it I know I'm gonna look into it after hearing that whole thing because uh, uh, I don't really have enough to really worry about too much but but I wouldn't mind putting put you know at least get a, a second location for at least half of my what little I have you know so uh, but the uh, I wanted to let you know SD bullion was one of the uh, he says you know if you're gonna buy don't buy from Facebook because <laughs> you can get ripped off there but he did point out and I because I have sold coins on eBay and Andy pointed out that that's not necessarily a bad place to buy your silver gold and platinum um, because you know if you if you don't take care of your customer on eBay uh, they'll, they'll, you know, they'll give you a bad rating and uh, and then you're, you're you're gone I mean you won't have an account and so most people that you're buying a coin from have a reputation and they they have nothing but five star ratings and thousands of people have reviewed them or hundreds of people and like in my case it's just a, a hundred so I, if I did want to sell some coins I might do it on eBay so that's not a bad place to get it but if you're going to go with a dealer go with a reputable dealer and he did mention well of course Miles Franklin that's his company and the, I, I would definitely do business with them in fact I talked to Andy Sheckman one time on the phone and uh, and SD Bullion SD Bullion has Britannicas for 20 about 23 dollars because silver's come down in price so it's a good time Two of the quick things to talk about, uh, somebody was pointing out, and it makes perfect sense, um, that it wouldn't have done no good to put Hunter on the stand because he's under indictment for uh, just the, the very limited criminal offense of tax evasion. So uh, if you're under indictment, you're just going to plead the fifth. I'm under indictment. I plead the fifth. So even if they had brought him up to testify before Congress, and that's why they never did. They were just sitting there grilling him. And uh, so that's... Uh, just giving you that piece of that tidbit of information. They're not stupid. Most lawyer, most everybody in Congress is a lawyer or an attorney. Probably studied at one of the big league schools. So they knew that there was no use in calling him up to have him sit there and just plead the fifth on everything. The other thing that was another piece of information, and I did not know, well, the first thing is, you know, the FBI now is going after the people that were outside the Capitol building, that never even went into the Capitol building. So they're trying to make an example of MAGA Republicans. So if, you, if you're a MAGA Republican, they might be knocking on your door because that's the entire federal government is weaponized at this point. And when I say entire, I didn't realize that Obama signed into, and I'm not sure if it passed Congress or if it was just an executive order, but did you know that the FBI, I mean not the FBI, the CIA can spy on Americans now? I did not know that. You know, but because the original purpose of the CIA was foreign in nature only. Well, now, evidently, with this uh, Obama uh, thing that he put out, they can spy on Americans. That uh, So now the entire we federal government is weaponized against you and me. Just throwing that out. It's funny how when you're making a video, you always get a question. So somebody asked, they said, uh, well, you know, we're 34 trillion in debt you know I've been saying for many years that this was going to come back to haunt us what's what's the difference now well the difference now is nobody's buying that debt see in the past the dollar was the reserve currency and everybody was forced to buy our debt whether they thought it was good debt or bad debt well now you got the bricks so you got an alternative to the dollar so I just wanted to point out to that person this is a whole new ball game so we'll see what happens so a while back I did a video on drones or drone technology and how it's advanced during the Ukraine war. How Russia really didn't, uh, had invested in drones at the beginning and, and now it's one of their number one industries. Uh, <clears throat> well, there's another advancement now that I didn't cover in that video and that is they're going into the, uh, the big drones now. You know how we have the head predator that can fire like a Hellfire missile? Well, the Russians, you know, they haven't put much into the bigger drones until now so now they're developing a whole fleet of big drones uh, for I imagine reconnaissance uh, being able to fire missiles uh, and it, basically they're going to be an accompaniment, comp accompaniment 
to their fighters and their, their bombers. So they're supplementing their Air Force now with drones. These are going to be the big boys. Just wanted to throw out that tidbit of news.